afternoon. Uh, today I'm joined by the Secretary of Health, Kim Malson Risen. And going into this week, I knew there would be some questions as to if the legislature would be called into special session. So I wanted to talk about a little bit of spending and revenue projections and plans. Uh, we uh, have some buckets that will be addressed through spending going forward, including health care, small business, education, and local governments. I want to be clear, the state of South Dakota has received dollars through the CARES Act, uh, but we will not be spending all of that money at the state level. It will be dispersed into these different buckets and areas for local governments and businesses going forward. Uh, the balance of these dollars will be held um, to fill immediate needs, but also we need to make sure that we're not just addressing immediate needs and covering costs for some of these local governments, but saving some dollars that we could potentially use for revenue replacement should that flexibility be granted to us from the federal government. Based on what we know today, we most likely will not need a special session in the month of June, uh, and that would be before the end of the current fiscal year. Potentially, we could need one later on, though. Uh, revenue numbers will be in next week and we'll have a better picture then as to what we're looking at. Uh, I signed two executive orders today, one regarding state licensing boards and the other one that is extending our state of emergency for the state of South Dakota. That second executive order is necessary because federal law requires us uh, to have it in place and in, in order to be able to access federal dollars. The details of those executive orders will be on the covid.sd.gov website. I want to address a little bit of education spending uh, because there are different areas to which education dollars have been flowing to the state. The CARES Act provided grant funds for all levels of education. Uh, between three different federal funds, South Dakota Public Schools will receive about $68 million. The Higher Education Emergency Relief Funds amount to about $19 million, and they went directly to 10 colleges and universities in the state. Half of that money is allocated to students to help cover costs such as food, housing, technology, health care, and child care. Uh, the other half is used by our colleges and universities to defray some of their expenses that they incurred due to COVID-19. Tribal and private universities also received funds, and that totaled $7.6 million. Another area is elementary and secondary schools. Uh, their elementary and secondary schools emergency relief fund amounted to $41 million. That will be used to provide educational services to their students for cleaning their facilities, for adapting uh, to help meet their health and sanitation recommendations, providing technology, and internet connections for students through remote learning, among other things. Again, that amount was $41 million that went to education and second, elementary and education secondary schools relief. Uh, the third bucket is the Governor's Emergency Education Relief Funds. This was $7.9 million, uh, then 5.7 million of that was prioritized for quality remote learning uh, teacher professional development and supporting students as they come back into the building. The other 2.2 million of that 7.9 will go to support workers who had layoffs or closures tied to those businesses where they worked. Uh, we've considered all of these grants available to us and we're determining how to use them, those to provide schools with the most flexibility. And we'll be announcing soon grants for private schools and for universities as well. With that, I will open it up to any questions that you may have. Coming to JP from KORN News Radio. Sure, go ahead, JP. Hey, right, can you give us an update on the uh, checkpoint situation? Uh, we still have an ongoing uh, investigation going on, uh, and so therefore I'm not going to be able to provide more details for you today, JP. Okay, just to follow up on that, uh, have you received any response yet from our congressional delegation, uh, Department of Interior, Department of Justice, or the White House? No, we have not received any follow-up communication from any of those entities. Thank you. You bet. Bob, did you have one in the room? No? Governor, this is Stephen Gross. Sure, go ahead, Stephen. 
Um, I think that the president is considering a different uh, location than North Carolina for the Republican National Convention. I was wondering if you had considered or have any plans uh, to put South Dakota forward as a possible host for the convention. No, I have not uh, put a proposal forward to do that. Any further questions? Bob? Governor, I'll do Bob and then Lisa, I'll come to you. Governor, I'll come to you. Given the news that came out last week about the COVID-19 app, um, have you downloaded it on your phone? And secondly, do you have any concerns about it at this point? I don't. I have downloaded it on my phone, uh, so it is there. I don't have any concerns about privacy issue. It's a voluntary tool, and my private information is shared unless the user opts in at a certain time to voluntarily do so. And if folks would like to see the privacy policy on the CARE 19 app, it is available on covid.sd.gov. Okay, Lisa, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just wondering, the, um, just wanted the clarification on the amounts that you were describing. Are those part of the 1.25 billion that the state is receiving, or is that separate? Yes, it is a part, it was part of the revenue that I talked about uh, was that there are separate education dollars that also came in, but the amounts that I referenced uh, in my opening statement is what was in relations to the CARES Act. Okay. The total, and at this point, you know, how much? Yeah, go ahead. No, the total between the three, uh, secondary education, uh, the K-12 system, and then also the emergency education relief funds is $68 million in total. Okay. And then how much um, at this point do you know how much is going to like cities and counties? That is something that we'll be uh, bringing a plan forward soon. We'd like to deploy some of those funds as soon as possible because we know that counties and cities um, are incurring costs as it relates to taking care of folks through COVID-19 spread in the state. Um, I do wanna remind everybody though, the 1.25 billion came to the state uh, and there was no requirement that the state pass along any revenue to our counties and cities uh, because uh, the language in the bill did not uh, say that that had to happen with the cities of a certain size of which we don't have any but we will be in the state of south dakota uh, taking some of those funds and deploying them to our cities and counties to help cover their costs while it's not required the state of south dakota will be sending dollars to those entities have you heard from the Treasury about using the money as a uh, revenue replacement? We have. We, we uh, have some indications that they're still continuing to look at it. They have been good about giving us some flexibility in the dollars that we've already received. So that's been helpful. Um, it's, we still, though, uh, for the next fiscal year, really would like to see them give us some ability to use it for revenue replacement because of the impact we're seeing to our economy. Uh, and that can be helpful uh, through language through Treasury or Congress could pass a bill that would have that language and put it directly into statute. Ma'am. Yes. Justin, this is Captain General. Um, how much of that money budgeted for the school uh, is, is, the, is the state still short money after all that money comes in? I know last year or in this past year uh, legislation was passed to give schools like a 2% increase and I know talking from both Stanley and Pierre their superintendents are like yeah we're not and most of the people they're talking like we're not going to put that in our budget this year we're just going to run it at zero uh, is that I guess advice that you would give going forward I mean you're still battling for them and stuff but yeah I think the superintendents that are Putting their budgets together that way are being responsible. We will see revenue numbers the first week of June that will give us a lot more guidance as to what the current fiscal year budget will look like and what next year will look like as well. A lot of these dollars are tied to costs that the schools could not have anticipated. Uh, doing extra cleaning in their buildings, uh, responding to health requirements, uh, implementing distance learning. Uh, some of those things were things that the school districts didn't have in their budgets and was extra cost to them. So. Uh, but we're looking for the ability to continue to help our schools be funded um, at a level to which we committed. We just possibly 
we'll still need some revenue replacement flexibility in the language and then we'll know a lot more after we get those those revenue numbers next week This is Morgan and SDPD. Let's go to Morgan and then we'll go to SDPD. Can you talk about any planning or conversations you're having going forward about how schools will return in the fall and whether that be another statewide decision? I was visiting with my uh, Secretary of Education, Ben Jones, this morning a little bit about that. I think every school district is approaching it differently. I think they're planning to have students in their buildings, but yet putting in contingency plans should they need to make an adjustment at the local level and have kids learn from home as well. So uh, I think they're being wise in preparing for any situation that could come along this fall. And I'm sorry, I didn't know who we had on that question from SDP. Jackie? <laughs> Yeah, thank okay. you, Governor. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if we can have an update on the statewide hydroxychloroquine trial and if we can have a response on the World Health Organization suspending their study. Sure. Jackie, this is Kim Olson Rice with the Department of Health. So um, the uh, experts that are uh, conducting the study are taking into account every single other study about hydroxychloroquine. And so they'll look at uh, the most recent one um, with the World Health Organization as well. Um, the thing that I would just tell you is that, you know, there's about 175 studies across the, the country, across the uh, continents um, that are dealing with hydroxychloroquine. They're all different in terms of who they're treating, um, the type of regimen that they're using. And so um, just because we see one study that is not moving forward doesn't mean it's necessarily comparable um, to the study as it is in South Dakota. But, um, you know, again, we will be looking at those study results and um, making sure that the safety protocols that are in place for the South Dakota study remain uh, strong and uh, will protect people from poor outcomes. Thank you. And do we have a, a number of people that are now enrolled in those trials? I don't have the number today. I know we enrolled our first person here just a couple of weeks ago. Um, there's a process for people that are interested. You can find information on the covid.sd gov website um, and there's a phone number for folks to call the process is then uh, once you do that you'll be kind of vetted through some questions to see if you're a viable candidate um, for the clinical study and um, it'll proceed from there if if that's in fact the case thank you one thing i would add is that sanford research is leading that trial and so uh, any of those questions too i'm sure they'd be happy to Yes, Governor, Bob. Uh, has, has another trial stepped forward yet to uh, show interest in, in mass testing? We do, yes. Yeah. Um, so we've got, um, last week we had the mass testing at Siskin Wapatin. That was a joint effort between South Dakota and North Dakota. And uh, by all accounts, I think the tribe was really pleased with how that turned out. Um, uh, so we are now working with um, Standing Rock. We're working to try to get them testing supplies. They have a very robust plan folks in different South Dakota communities um, as part of their reservation. Um, we are also reaching out to Yankton, who has expressed interest, um, as well as Rosebud. And so um, I expect that in the coming weeks, we'll have more details around those kinds of testing events um, in many of our tribal areas. Thank you. Just to, to follow up on a different point earlier in this uh, briefing, if they've requested mass testing. Well, that's next. Okay. <laughs> well, no, they have not formally responded. Um, I think we, we got some communication um, from one of the tribes, but they did they have not accepted the three-point plan that I presented to them as far as moving their checkpoints to BIA roads um, and being able to facilitate them there. Um, and we're still hopeful that they would consider that plan going forward. And I'll let Kim respond to the mass testing. Um, both Cheyenne River and uh, Oklahoma Sioux Tribe have been participating in calls that we've had for updates, um, but as of now, they have not reached out around mass testing um, for uh, their residents, and uh, we hope that they will do that. For 
further questions? Okay. This is Stephen Gross from IT. Go ahead, Stephen. All right. Uh, I, I understood that uh, the vice president had a call with governors uh, earlier today. I, I, I'm not sure that you were on that, but if you were, could you just um, maybe tell us a little bit about what was communicated and, um, and just a reaction to that call? Yes, I was able to stay on that call for about a, an hour and 45 minutes. Uh, and uh, the discussion was mainly around supply chain making sure the governors had supplies, uh, letting us know updates on uh, testing equipment and also how states were doing and how reopening plans were going uh, for many of the other states. So he gave an update as well as Dr. Burks uh, talked for quite some time and then FEMA gave some information. So it was a pretty general weekly update phone call that the vice president holds with governors with input from governors across the nation. Okay, thanks so much. Have a good day.